Because it was clear that it was going to rise. God had appointed how things should be. Scripture gives it to be understood that from Malachi 2 where it says that the priest is the messenger of the Lord. Malachi 2 and 7. He is the messenger of the Lord. And in Malachi 3 where it says, I will send my messenger before thy face. That those two scriptures put together gives it to be seen that the messenger is the priest and the priest of God that he will send is Elijah because we know it's referring to John the Baptist. And the priest of the Most High God or God the Father is Melchizedek. That shows Elijah is Melchizedek. The spirit of Elijah is Melchizedek. Elijah meaning mighty one of God. In the seventh chapter of Hebrews, it goes further to explain about Melchizedek. Verse 2 it says, To whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all. First being by interpretation king of righteousness. This is not a Canaanitish priest. This is a heavenly visitation that Abraham received. Don't be deceived by Gentiles commentary. Gentile theologian. This is a heavenly visitation of the priests of the Most High God. It takes a blind and a spiritually ignorant person not to see this. This is a heavenly visitation. King of righteousness and king of peace coming to Abraham. Now the writer of Hebrews is exalting this man. That the power of his being may be seen. First to proclaim the Messiah's righteousness, then from there in to go into Israel's restoration. So without father, verse 3 said, without father, without mother, without descent, having neither begin of days nor end of life, but made like unto the Son of God, abide the priest continually. Now verse 3 says, he, Melchizedek, he didn't have a father. Nor did he have a mother, a physical descent that is. He had no physical father. He had no physical mother. But he abided continually. He had neither beginning of days nor end of life. Now, when he said he had not a beginning of days, understand that days are counted by sunsets from the creation of the world. Melchizedek's time is not counted in the sun rising and the sun setting. He didn't have a beginning of days. He's begotten of the Father. Also here in chapter 3 it says, in verse 3 in chapter 7 I mean, it says he was made like unto the Son of God. The Son of God was begotten of the Father. Therefore it gives it to be known that Melchizedek was begotten of God the Father. He is another son of God. If this don't agree with man Trinity theology, that's too bad. This is the Bible. Let every man be a liar, but let Elohim be true. Because you be found to fight against God's work. You're going to reap the consequences. Jesus said, Elijah, who is Melchizedek, shall come and restore all things. He is the restorer of Israel. He is the preparer of the church for the Messiah's return, the church being both Jews and Gentiles. He is the one to prepare the Levites to rule in the time of the restoration, to teach them the Melchizedek order priesthood that Christ was risen in, that is, his body was risen immortal. Melchizedek is the one to teach it. He even being the branch, and the Messiah is not the branch, he is the vine that needs to be understood he is the one to teach the Levites the priesthood of the kingdom of heaven. The enforcer of righteousness and peace, Melchizedek, is the one to teach it to the Levites. He is the one to build the temple. As recorded in Zechariah chapter 6. See, your, your theologians teach you that Jesus is the one to come and build a temple. That's a lie. That's racism. Based in racism and anti-Semitism, those that hate Jews. Oh, can't you read? 
Can't you read the Bible instead of just following men? When are you going to stop just following men and learn to hear the word of God? I know you. most people, their faith is there in men that they can't hear God because their faith in men and been disciplined unto faith in men. Scripture makes it plain that Melchizedek didn't have a natural father. He didn't have a natural mother. He wasn't in Adam's genealogy, nor in Abraham's genealogy. He didn't have a beginning of days, nor end of life. Days is when the sun will go up and come down, or otherwise before that is eternal. He was before that time of the creation. He's the son of God that before this world was. So he doesn't have a beginning of days. He is an eternal, immortal spirit man, made like unto Jesus himself. Begotten of the Father, an immortal spirit man, begotten of God. He is a son of God. And he abideth the priest continually. Verse 4 of Hebrews chapter 7 said, Now consider how great this man was, unto whom even the patriarch Abraham gave a tenth of his fall. Now he goes and makes showing the greatness of this man. And this will be in a lot of people. So we don't want to see how great Melchizedek is, because it'll be that we're going to stand for Jesus. You are a lie. You are a demonic, hellbound, damned liar. You ain't standing for Jesus. You're standing for yourself. Just like those in the days of Moses said, we standing for God. And we stood Moses. You, they were a lie. They were standing for themselves. Hellbound, damned, rebellious generation. God destroyed them. And brought the next generation into the promised land. Faithful to his promise. But he didn't tolerate man's rebellion. Going against authority that he said in peace. No, even Miriam was a prophetess. But when she went against God's authority, being a prophetess. Or she was a prophet of a prophetess of God. And Aaron was a prophet of God. But they withstood their brother whom God had appointed to be the leader. And God called them out. Miriam spoke against Moses because he married a black woman. I think he was a more beautiful, biblical woman. Elohim called them all three out. He said to Miriam and Aaron, Moses, sister and brother, why wasn't you scared to speak against Moses, my servant? Didn't you know he represented me? Didn't you know that he stands in my shoes? Why didn't you fear? If I speak to another man, I speak to him in parables and vision. But to Moses, my servant, I speak to him apparently. Why wasn't you scared? So when he my younger brother. Miriam may have said, and Aaron could have said. After God finished rebuking and reproving him, he went up from them and Miriam was never white as snow. And when Aaron saw it, he began to pray to Moses then. You know, all of a sudden, he learns to honor. If God set a man in honor and leadership and you don't want to go, so I mean, I don't know, man. You're a fool. Tell you the truth. But it ain't your tradition. Same way it was with John the Baptist, the way it was with Jesus. Oh, my goodness. Paul says, and then all this matter, he says, Paul and Apostle, I don't know why you started out that way. You see, you let it be known who God has called you to be. That puts a condemnation on me. So I tell you that I speak by the spirit of Elijah. You go against us to your damnation, not mine. It's to your damnation. Miriam and Aaron spoke against Moses when the glory of God went up from them. Moses was left with white as snow. Aaron then began to pray to Moses. Lord, Moses, my Lord. Call the Lord now. All of a sudden things fall in place. Pray for her. Moses prayed for his sister. God said to Moses, said, put her out from the camp. If her father had but spit in her face. So many words, God said she still got the smell of pee on her and got a nerve to stand up. But one thing for a man, but a woman stepping out of her place. To put down a man of my lead. And God said, like, she still got the smell of pee on her. 
and got the nerve to stand against the man out there. And said, put her outside the tent. If I, put her outside the tent. If I found her, but spit in her face. Is that humiliation? He said, I did it. Put her outside the tent. And now for the time period, then bring her back in. Just let them know you don't get out of place. So I'm a prophet. I'm a prophetess. Stand against God and his word. Because a man that come carrying God's word don't come of his own authority. Most of them raise up himself. Aaron didn't make himself uh, uh, the high priest in the time when he became a God. Did. God selected. God causes Aaron rod the bullet and the blossom. The Messiah didn't make himself a priest after order Melchizedek. The Father did. He raised him from the grave, showing he accepted him and dying for men shortcoming the knowledge we need in the Ten Commandments and the laws. And accepted him as his blood, as the blood of the New Testament after his suffering hell for three days and night for the judgment that was coming to men for their shortcoming of the Ten Commandments and the laws. He raised him a priest after the order of Melchizedek, that is, eternal life, a body that will never die. Abraham's seed made him more. God has chosen man. So to go against him is to go against God. To go against Moses, what's to go against God? To go against Melchizedek and say, He don't exist. Who is your preacher? So when my theologian, he graduated from seminary, so and so. You need to go back to cemetery, so and so. Because he's going to damn you to hell. You better get it right. You better learn something. You better get some faith in God and in his word. The scripture said, Now consider how great this man was, that he to whom even Abraham gave a tenth of his form. Someone said, Well, your preacher said he, Melchizedek, don't exist. You are holy people. He came to Abraham and Abraham paid tithes to him. He wasn't God's son. Verse 11, it tells that there arises another priest after order of Melchizedek. Talk about Jesus. How is being Jesus Melchizedek? When the scripture makes it clear that another priest. Verse 15 says that there arises another. Twice in the seventh chapter of Hebrews, they used the term, a, the word another, in describing the Messiah of the tribe of Judah being made a priest. How is he being Melchizedek? When the scripture makes it known he's made a priest after order of Melchizedek. So you don't like his being because it, it makes you envy. You're going to stand against, against Melchizedek's person and existence. Talk about your ignorant religious leaders who deny Abraham that the Messiah took on the seat of Abraham and said he's doing something to God. Talking about your religious leaders who deny that the Messiah entered into the seed of Abraham and Mary conceived that seed that said he's doing something for God. Said, some of them said Mary Immaculate Conception. Said Mary, she was, didn't have a human nature like we have either. You're ignorant. Evil. Men devising doctrine though, that go against God and his word. Your religious organization. Christian nation. You say, tell you something about this so-called Christendom in this earth today. You think the gospel being preached you, don't you? Your Christian religion that you teach deny that Christ took on him the seed of Abraham, entered into a man's seed, a man's sperm. A sperm taken from Abraham, the spirit son of God, entered into him. You think they teach the gospel, don't you? But they deny Christ's incarnation. Even though they use the word incarnation, then they turn around and Said he turned into a flesh. But they denied the incarnation being in carnal. In, man is a spirit inside of a body. Incarnate. He's a spirit in a body. They deny that he actually was incarnate. Even though they use that word. Because they don't accept that he entered into a body. So they are not really saying he's incarnate. They say he just changed his form. Just transform from a spirit to a flesh to a different form. They don't teach Christ's incarnation. They know that. Note that one point. Then they denied Mary's conception. They were actually conceived in her womb. The Bible says in Galatians 4 that the Messiah was made of a woman. You think you hear the gospel, don't you, in this country, don't you? You don't get his incarnation. He took on the seed of Abraham and Mary conceived that seed with. The Spirit, Son of God, inside that seed. 
and her reproductive cell conceived in and developed of her body. That's not taught in your religion. You didn't know that? It's not taught in your Christendom. Why do you think your preachers throughout your Christmas holidays taught that Jesus didn't have an earthly father? You don't know why. But he said he was the son of God. You don't know why. You think you hear the gospel preached to you, don't you? But you want to stand against my words, don't you? I explain in teaching, explain how that when it says Emmanuel at his birth, God with us, that's not talking about him just being with men. It's not what that means. It means he's a, not just with men, but also one of us. As recorded in Hebrews 2 and 14, it says, For as much as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he likewise took part of the S A M E same. He became a man among men. He became one of us. That's what that's saying. Emmanuel don't mean he was just with man. God was with man under the law. He would come down in his spirit and send his spirit down. He <laughs> just came among men. Emmanuel don't just mean he's among us. Of his spirit present just among men. But he was with us as one of us. Notice the ways that your Christendom of this world. In case you don't know what I'm doing. You don't know what God is doing through this vessel. You think you hear the gospel of me in tradition today, don't you? I explain in the scripture teach that his death was for the redemption of transgressions on the first testament. Your religion denies it. They say Christ died for your sins on the New Testament. And for the judgment coming at the end of the world, the death penalty that shall be pronounced at the end of the world, your theologians teach you and your Christendom teaches. The scripture teaches, the Jewish text teaches, that his death was for the redemption of transgression of the first testament. And for the ending of that testament, he took away the birth that he established the son. But you think you hear the gospel, don't you? You don't even know the gospel of the cross of Christ. You don't know the gospel of the reason why he died. It ain't even preached in your gospel in your churches. Baptist, Methodist, Church of Christ, Church of God in Christ, Episcopalian, Methodist, Catholic. You don't teach it. You think you hear the gospel of me in the name of mission, don't you? I'm not the one you desire to arise before him. Moses went to the true Israel that he brought up each of you. But he spoke God's word, right? Stand in your place. Stand in your place. You didn't be Abraham. Because the Messiah took an Abraham's seed. You didn't be male chest today. Because he is an immortal, eternal son of God also. Let me give you some nails to hate on. I shall forever be Elijah Melchizedek's blessing and reign eternally with Christ for him in the kingdom of heaven as enforcer of righteousness and peace. Hate on that. It ain't changing nothing for you. And you don't, that don't hear it shall be damned and will not follow the truth. But once it comes to your ear, the knowledge you account for Take the gospel being preached to you, don't you? Your so called Christendom taught in this world do not acknowledge the reason of Christ is dead. Deny the gospel of the cross of Christ. Concerning his blood being shed after death, your religion denies that that blood, the blood of the New Testament, he had to take away the first before he gave the second. After he Suffered in hell for three days and night, the Father raised him, accepting him as a substitute for all men had died, and brought the blood of his testament into force. Given a will and testament, whereby men could be born into the kingdom of heaven. But your religion denies it. Your Christendom, your doctrine of your theologian deny this. And now they deny also. But you think the gospel being preached to you, don't you? Say, why are you talking about what you're doing? You go to hell if you want to. Go straight blank to hell. I'm going to keep on preaching the gospel that I preach. You can go to hell if you want to hear the truth. And you're going to know God has sent me an authority. 
and, uh, and commanded me to stay with authority. You don't know me because I speak by the spirit that moves me and you stand against him. When you stand against him, you stand against Christ. When you stand against Christ, you stand against the Father. God raised the son from the grave, his vessel that he came in. Raised him out of the son, conquered hell, the spirit son of God, conquered hell by the power of the Holy Ghost. And the father raised that vessel, Abraham's seed, from the grave in immortality. A priest at the order of Melchizedek. See, you don't preach this in your gospel. See, if you don't preach that he took on that seed of Abraham, you don't even know what risen a priest at the order of Melchizedek. I'm talking about the vessel. I'm talking about Abraham and Mary's flesh and blood. And you don't know what I'm talking about. It ain't your God. It ain't your God. The spirit son inside that body was already immortal. You think you hear the gospel preached, you don't you? You know, Elijah, the Tishbite, upon Mount Carmel, had the prophets of Baal. And it came down to a challenge. Who is God really with? Moses stood before Dathan and Abiram and came down to a challenge. Who really standing for God? You don't know. If the gospel that I proclaim, or, I, or, or am I God sent, or are you religious, religious leaders that stand against what I proclaim? Who is really God sent? It's coming to a challenge. Oh, yeah, buddy. Tell your religious leaders it's coming. And the earth will know because of the voice of the word that the spirit of Elijah and the Holy Ghost that I shall Elohim the Holy Ghost I shall be anointed with even the scepter. That I will proclaim this verse shall be shaken out of this place. And you don't know. Notice what it says continued by Mel Chandra. It says in verse 4, Now consider how great this man was, to whom even the patriarch Abraham gave the tenth of his form. Talking about the greatness of this man. Male Chesedin. Christ was visited the priest at the order of this man, an immortal, eternal man. Who was before this world was even an extension of Christ's person. There are many sons of God now who are branches. But this branch of God, this spirit man, whose vessel I am, whom I proclaim to you as I am instructed of the Spirit, Holy Spirit, and of him within me. That when the time come of judgment, you can't say it. You didn't hear it. You can't say it when proclaimed. But see, God has appointed that this is to be the one to restore Israel. Even Elijah, Melchizedek, the mighty one of y'all. He is the one that your Gentile, European theologians say that his work they attribute him to be done by Jesus. When Jesus said that Melchizedek shall do it, the prophets say Melchizedek shall do it. But your religious leaders say that Jesus is the branch and he will do it. The scripture says that Melchizedek showed that he will do it. You go back and read some, you get what I'm saying right. In Mac Michael chapter 5 proclaimed his coming from of old and everlasting. In Isaiah chapter 49, it tells his birth from the womb he has called me. You call me Howard, talking about me. He's made my mouth like a sharp sword. You might pull a cut sometime. Hid me in his cripple, and I am he who is appointed from this vessel. Flesh don't profit nothing. I'm talking about the spirit. You mean Jesus? So you've been looking at his body. You bitter and angry, calm fit. That's the same part of world in the days of the side. They seen that body. And he's standing there before them looking like Mary. And they're looking at that physical flesh and blood body because that's all they can see. And he said to them, Before Abraham was, I am. Let me tell you this. Before Abraham ever existed, I before so ever Abraham was ever born, I'm talking about me, Howard, you call me. But I'm not talking about the physical vessel right now. Howard one may mean one is sitting in power and authority. Before this vessel, before Abraham ever was, I am. Just like Jesus said to describe the Pharisees. But they were looking at that body. You can look at this flesh. You ain't got no spirit, man. You a lies. You ain't got no spirit, man. You see two eyes in the flesh. 
And they say to them, boy, you ain't 50 years old yet. Have you seen Abraham? And Jesus said to him, I was before Abraham ever existed. They went to take up stone. Another place he said to them, I mean, he said that he was son of God. And they said, he said to them, well, what do you stone with? Because you being a God, make this of me. He said to them, is it not written in your law that I have said, you are God's? And you said to me, who the Father has sent, that I blaspheme because I say I'm the Son of God? And also that scripture says, I said you're God, but you shall die like me. See, you can look at my physical vessel and you think, that's what you're talking about. I know your mama. I know your daddy. That's what he said about Jesus. You don't know my mama. You don't know my dad. You don't know nothing. You're just a blind fool. You can't hear me. God has ordained the way he appointed salvation. The way he's appointed for Israel to be restored. And Israel is going to be restored. And Israel's restoration is going to result in a fullness to the body of believers. The Gentiles also are coming to be grafted into the church. Ain't no Jews and Gentiles to my churches. You ain't grafting Israel, you ain't of no church. Not his. Even though God separate his people where he will have his people, where he will do his people, you still a part of that same body if you in Christ. You need to be a part of the Israel or the Jewish body, the church, or ecclesia, or you ain't of no church. Oh, well, I have a Gentile theologian saying that. You ain't fool, follow them. You ain't grafted in, you ain't in. Because when you're born of the Messiah, you're born of the seed of Abraham, a spiritual seed of Abraham, because he did take on the seed of Abraham. But your Gentile doctrine denies being known. The scripture also in proclaiming Melchizedek's coming or proclaiming proclaiming Israel's restoration. We're going to go into in the uh, eighth chapter of the book of Hebrews, and that is also proclaiming Melchizedek's coming because he is the one to teach the order of the Melchizedek priesthood. The Gentiles ain't got it. The apostle didn't go much into explaining it. Peter spoke of it in the book of Peter. That we are royal priesthood. In Revelation, John wrote of it that God had made us kings and priests. Here in the book of Hebrews, it goes more into detail and talk about the Melchizedek priesthood. But it's not broken down here because it's appointed to be instructed in, in by a certain one in a certain time. That's right. And the children of the of Israel, the Levites, will be instructed. Under Melchizedek, under the branch, in the order of the Melchizedek priesthood, Melchizedek would be leader in building the temple. His name is also the branch. The, the structure of the new temple is different from that of the Moses, as you read it in the book of Ezekiel, in the last chapters of the book of Ezekiel. It's a different temple, and, and the order and the of the priesthood will be different. And the branch, Melchizedek, will instruct in Christ's Melchizedek order priesthood. You see, because, and give this to be understood also, because your people deny Melchizedek, and they see him as an immortal man, see, if they begin teaching about Melchizedek, then it will mess their Trinity theology, so you won't hear much about it. Some people ain't never even heard his name, don't even know who that is. So you don't know that the priesthood of the New Testament is the Melchizedek or the priesthood. That everyone born of the Holy Spirit are priests out the order of Melchizedek in Christ, having eternal life abiding in them. Even the Holy Ghost is eternal life abiding in them. Now you, don't, you ain't getting this understanding. You don't understand the priests of the New Testament. You don't know the power of the priesthood of the Melchizedek or priesthood in the, the kingdom of heaven. You don't understand. Because you don't understand about who Melchizedek is. And you don't understand what it means for, for Christ's body, the Son of God's body, be risen a priest after the order of Melchizedek. That is an immortal spirit man that shall never die. You don't understand these things. You don't understand, so therefore you don't understand either what it means to be born of the Holy Ghost, to be born into the kingdom of heaven, or the Melchizedek or a priesthood. These are eternal priests down here. 
Walking in authority. Walking in power. So you don't really know what Peter, what Peter was talking about. He said God made us a royal priesthood. Or what John wrote about in Revelation. He's made us kings and priests under God. Kings and queens and priests under God. You don't know what he's talking about. Because you deny. Your religious leaders deny Melchizedek. So you can't see. They deny that Christ took on the seed of Abraham. So you don't see a physical, a physical flesh and blood body that was in the tomb. And the spirit that was in hell. And that physical flesh and blood body. Mary and Abraham flesh and blood that the Messiah took on. It was risen. Immortal. A spirit flesh and blood body. That will never die. And a part of the supreme spirit son of God's being. You don't know what he's talking about. And when the apostle goes and says, we see the heavenly pieces. You don't understand the Melchizedek order priesthood. You see, the priesthood of the Levites, it was set in majesty. The priesthood of the Messiah is in greater majesty. You know, Aaron, with the robe he wore was ill. I mean, it was dead now. Jewels and precious stones upon his robe and a, and a bore about his girdle. I mean, he was luxurious. He was in majesty. Trained and honored to come before the king of kings. You know, you don't come to a king in any kind of way. To come before the presence of God. He was decked out in majesty. But Aaron's priestly majesty and glory, it don't touch the glory of a Melchizedek or a priest. You know, no majesty. You know, the Bible tells that in the New Testament that I, Elijah, Melchizedek, shall be. He don't mean you want to do him. He don't like it. Too. So he don't like it. But I see you. And you look physical to me. You blind. You don't see nothing. The Bible says that that tabernacle that was built, that built that that building that was built of of Solomon, after the pattern that Moses was given, that Solomon built. The scripture makes it known that the tabernacle, the house that shall be built in these last days, it shall be far more glorious than that which was built by Solomon, that which I shall build. Far more glorious. Spoken of in the book of Zechariah, and the kingdom and the rulership shall be between us both, referring to the two anointed, I and Moses. It shall be between us both. The glory of that time, not going the nations of the world and the Gentiles will come and worship there too. It shall be called the house of prayer to all nations. After God gather Israel and pull the Holy Ghost up on Israel, the nation of Israel is going to be back in the promised land. All going to know the Lord. Then it shall come to pass after that that he will pour the spirit upon all flesh, people of all days. That shall be massive salvation. You don't know what you're fighting. You fight against your own salvation. The European Gentile is standing against the restoration of Israel. It's fighting against their own salvation. You don't know what you're fighting against. The coming in of Israel shall be the fullness to the body of Christ, to the fullness of the believers all over the world. Knowledge shall increase itself, be glorious. And everybody in the land shall be holy unto God. Everybody in Israel. There will be no breaking in the entry. Somebody said, well, how shall it be that the, the lamb will lay down with the lamb? Yeah. Well, how they going to be if they ain't going to be when Jesus comes back, somebody said. You just can't see that, can you? And you can't see what Jesus said. They shall take up serpent either then. Why don't you just stop lying? You don't believe the Bible. In the time of my rule in Israel, all nations shall go that worship. The land shall flourish in Israel and shall be like the Garden of Eden in Israel. Not only is for the flourishing of the land and fruit trees and trees growing and the myrtle trees, but the animals would be at peace. You don't believe it, do you? You don't believe nothing in the Bible. You don't believe the scripture. You don't believe the scripture. So you said, one well, wonder well, 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 why was Elijah and Moses, why was Elijah and Melchizedek and Moses down the mountaintop with the Messiah? Why were they there in glory? Wasn't Moses dead? Oh, you did not shit. Elijah did not ascend up into the third heaven where God was either. 
His spirit came back on Eli's shoulders. When the spirit leaves the body, the body is dead. And Jesus said to Nicodemus, because Elijah was walking there among them, when he said to Nicodemus, you must be born again, I think after saying that, he made it clear to Nicodemus, because Nicodemus was a Pharisee. He let Nicodemus know, you don't need to be looking for Elijah to ascend out of heaven. That's what he was talking about. When he said to him, and no man has ascended into heaven, but the son of man which came down, I'm the first that's going to ascend up there. Elijah did not ascend up into the third heaven. He went to the third, but not to the third. Not for God's will, not bodily. He didn't go. That's what Jesus said. We're going to call him Elijah. Keep looking up in the sky and looking for Elijah's sin. And John was standing right there in, 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 in the land of Israel at that time. What was Jesus saying? Elijah is here. When he came out off the mountaintop, he made it known to the disciples. Elijah has been reincarnated. Ooh, this is another reason why they don't accept John being Elijah, your preachers. You see, they don't accept Christ's incarnation. That it actually got inside of a flesh, got inside of a seed. They say it turned into a seed. That's not incarnation. You need to learn something. They deny his incarnation. Even though they use the word incarnation, they do not accept the Messiah's incarnation. The scripture says, Hebrews 2 and 16, fairly took not only the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. They deny that in your theology. Your Christendom. That's your so-called Christianity taught in this world. In your Christendom, they deny that. So they definitely, they may reject Christ's incarnation. So when Elijah comes back in John, that's reincarnation. See, Elijah, the tish by spirit, left his body when he ascended so far into the first heaven and came back on Elisha and empowered him. And after Elisha died, his spirit went back to heaven. He was male Chesedek. Came back again in John the Baptist, the messenger priest of the Most High God. And he prepared the way before the Messiah, the Son of God. And he baptized the Son of God unto the Melchizedek order that he should arise unto. He baptized the Son of God unto the death that he should die for those whom he was baptizing for their sins of repentance and their sins under the first test. Because Christ would die for his sins under the first test. And he would rise up out of the water a priest got the order of Melchizedek, after the order of him. Melchizedek, who was inside of John. Melchizedek Elijah. Melchizedek Elijah was inside of John the Baptist. When he baptized Christ, he was initiating him to arise a priest bodily. After the order, as well spirit, but the Bible made him immortal. To rise a priest after the order of himself. This is what Elijah. Third time comes. See that this is reincarnation. Because he was incarnate in Elijah the Tishbite. And he was incarnate again inside of John the Baptist. You call Gabriel alive, you are. That was Zachariah's problem. He couldn't believe. But he ended up being dumb. And he couldn't say nothing until John was born. There was a man sent from God whose name was Joseph. He sought, was sent to bear witness of the light, that light. Even the supreme son of God. But he was the branch. He was the forerunner. He was the He was the one sent to prepare the way of the Messiah. He was Elijah. Jesus said in the 11th chapter of St. Matthew, he said, he didn't have the ear to hear. If you will receive it, this is Elijah. After John was resurrected, I mean, after Jesus, after John was dead, John the Baptist was dead, and Jesus was on the mountaintop with the disciples, they came down. They asked, Jesus said, Why come? The scribe said, Elijah must first come. And Jesus said to him, Elijah's come already. And they knew not, but done him whatsoever they missed him. They done what said they listened, and they the disciples understood they spoke of John the Baptist. You see, 
He understood, they understood that John was Elijah Bell.